When you buy large headphones, you must make a fundamental choice that will affect exactly what you will hear. I'm talking about what decision you have to take, wired or wireless headphones you need. Ok, now decide, closed or open. You really think that's all? But when you dive into the abyss of audiophile headphones, it turns out that the quest hasn't been completed yet. You need to choose further between dynamic and planar magnetic headphones. This choice becomes a test, it feels like if you choose the wrong answer now, you will finally lose. So which one should you take? I tried to find answers to all this, taking the most identical and at the same time fundamentally different headphones. These are Hi-Fi Man headphones, an American-Chinese brand that has become successful thanks to its close collaboration with the Hi-Fi community. Hi-Fi Man are known for offering reasonably priced audiophile planar magnetic headphones. Now they also have a very expensive ones, but we aren't talking about that today. First of all, I believe that Hi-Fi Man is a symbol of decent, affordable headphones. I haven't tested the most expensive Hi-Fi Mans, but I have no doubt they are great. But it's weird to buy this. You know, let's say Renault makes an expensive sports car. It's beautiful and must be very cool to drive, but my elderly neighbor has a Renault. She drives it to the supermarket for Brussels sprouts and toilet paper. So I have two fundamentally different models, closed HER9 and open back Deva Pro. HER9 are closed headphones with dynamic drivers, this is the most familiar design for headphones. This driver is most similar in design to those in the loudspeakers. There is a dumb diaphragm, a voice coil and a magnet at the back. This diaphragm is very thin, here it called the topology diaphragm. It has a special nanoparticle coating that helps to create a specific sound character. Plus there is a rare earth magnet which allows the headphones to have high sensitivity. Here it reaches 100 decibels. Deva Pro are open back planar magnetic headphones. They have the thinnest Neo Super Nano diaphragm as a driver with conductive tracks applied to it. And on both sides of it there are arrays of acoustically transparent magnets. They are shaped and arranged in such a way that the sound waves created by the vibrating membrane pass between them without interference. These headphones aren't a heavy load either, they have an impedance of 18 ohms and sensitivity of 93.5 decibels. Usually planar magnetic headphones are distinguished by low distortion, a wide stage and excellent detail. Usually planar magnetic headphones are distinguished by low distortion, a wide stage and excellent detail. But they need such an open design where the outer side is essentially covered only by a protective grille, which is only necessary so that you don't accidentally damage the thinnest membrane. Therefore, when you listen to such headphones, they spread the sound in both directions, towards to you and away from you. This most positively affects the width of the stage, the sound is drawn quite freely. However, those who are in the same room as you will also hear quietly that you are listening to. And you'll hear all the outside noise. Open back headphones don't completely isolate you from the outside world. Closed headphones, on the contrary, isolate you from the outside world as much as possible and no one from the outside hears your music. But at the same time, they have more of this feeling when the sound is inside of your head. Here is such a fundamental difference. Our headphones have the same headband design. It's covered with pleasant faux leather and inside it has a material with a memory effect. A simple bent metal piece, very strong, holds the cups. It's interesting that for closed headphones the rotation along the vertical axis has two positions while for open ones the move is absolutely free. The height adjustment is discrete with a rather tight movement. The closed ones have very beautiful large crimson red earcups, strongly reminiscent of some of the legendary Sony headphones. 
But there they were made of rare and expensive wood, and here they were made of an expensive polycarbonate or something similar. But it looks great anyway. Open back Deva Pro also have plastic ear cups, but the grill is made of aluminum. The ear pads are made of synthetic materials, a pleasant brazable fabric adheres to the head, but unfortunately there is no memory foam inside. Both those headphones are pretty light, 328 and 360 grams. They fit very well on my head and don't bother me in long sessions, I can wear them for 3 to 4 hours. But memory foam ear pads would definitely improve them. These ear pads you feel all the time because they don't adapt to the shape of the head, unlike the headband. The headphones have detachable cables and come with an expensive plain black cables with gold-plated 3.5mm mini jacks on both the headphone and amp sides, and a 6.3mm adapter is included. The cables don't really impress anyone, and I'd love to swap them out for something a little more audiophile, these headphones are worth it. And by the way, although you need to connect to both cups with this bundled cable, in fact, the design of the headphones allows you to connect only by one through the left cup with a special 4-pin TRRS jack cable. Therefore, if you swap out the complete cables, order this one. There is an option featuring these headphones with an additional module with a deck and an amplifier that will make these headphones wireless. And it's quite interesting in itself, it allows headphones to connect via Bluetooth 5.0 and supports AAC, SBC, APTX HD and Sony's LDAC. Inside there is a custom-created R2R deck of their own design called Himalaya. This device charges via USB-C, connects to the left cup and weights it down by only 25 grams. The module is able to work for 6 to 7 hours on a single charge, which is pretty good. It limits the headphone frequency range to 20 to 20,000 Hz and has a rather impressive signal to noise ratio of 114 decibels. Walking in headphones with this module is such a homemade cyberpunk, I enjoyed it. Listening to Sunny California Chill Wave from Steven Romero, who performs under the moniker Lucy in Disguise, is the real deal. In terms of sound quality with the module, everything is really decent, it allows both headphones to express almost beyond its shores, but I must say that with a wired connection with a good amplifier you get more quality. But I like the signature of the module, it gives a juicy, rich and dynamic sound on this music paired with the iPhone. But as always, there are a couple of problems. The first is that the module can't skip tracks, you can only start and stop playback with its only button and can't change the volume. You'll have to do all this on the source side. And secondly, never turn on this module when the headphones are on your head. It announces the connection very loudly and once again, this is pretty cool, but with a cable connection of course you get more quality. So what's the difference between the sound of open back planar magnetic and closed back dynamic headphones? Firstly, as I said, open headphones sound freer. If you listen to modern blues rock, then listen to the latest singles of the excellent Canadian band The Blue Stones. Their music combines different noise textures that create a lot of noise at a brisk pace, juicy punchy drums and Tarek Jafar's vocals with reverb. Quite an explosive mixture, many headphones have a hard time on it. The closed back HR9s are tuned for this just perfectly. Their dynamic drivers deliver a lot of warm, tight, juicy bass with a heavy punch that keeps you instantly shaking your head. Moreover, the close design helps to ensure that the music sounds are close as possible. And at the same time, the mid-range of the headphones is also quite openly served. Guitars and vocals are always at the forefront, they are never crushed by these juicy lows. The high frequencies are delivered quite neatly, they don't have any significant rise and don't poke out the ears, everything is pretty safe in this respect. When switching to planar Deva Pro, the following happens. The stage becomes freer, the sound becomes smoother, there is no longer such a rich bass, everything is more restrained, calmer. If R9 provoked you all the time, then these aren't, you are very calmness when wearing them. 
They are definitely more detailed, you hear more in them, but the sound is less embossed in comparison. On these headphones I liked such wild music less, but if you liked something near jazzy, then I think that you'll like the planar magnetic ones more. This time I recommend diving into the abstractions of Marquez Hill, an American jazz trumpeter from Chicago. His magnificent, lively, multifaceted album seems to be created to reveal the abilities of Deva Pro. They create a fast, transparent, crystal clear sound around you, in which you hear everything. It feels like a monitor signature, but it isn't aggressive, the sound doesn't tire at all. The only thing I would like to add to the sound is low frequencies. They are delivered too delicately, they lack weight for my taste. And if you switch to close door 9's back, then yes, you get the desired weight and volume at the bottom, the sound becomes warmer, but these headphones strive to paint this music with large strokes, it becomes warm, more embossed, uh, but loses resolution and sounds a little heavy. Therefore here I choose planar magnetic ones, but I think that many won't agree with me and will prefer just such a presentation. I have been using them for over a month, and all this time the question hasn't left me. Which ones would I keep if I had such a choice? And you know what? This is really quite a difficult question for me. In terms of usability, headphones come close, except that planar headphones are less practical due to their open design. Generally, I like the hi-fi mans, these are great value for the money. Of course, they are devoid of any luxury, everything is quite simple in their finish, and there is literally nothing included with them. No handbags, cases, additional cables or anything else. But on the other hand, you don't need to overpay for the image, you only pay for engineering and sound. It's obviously appropriate in this segment. I listen to different kinds of music and I would like to have a choice. I think that's why people acquire many headphones of different varieties. And in this case, I couldn't make any decision for myself. I honestly don't know which ones are better for me. I would definitely take the wireless module and with it I would leave both pairs. Why not?